a SketchUp landscape and graphics workflow because landscape architecture isn't just planting trees and tree symbols and CAD, but as you know, it's, it's the whole storytelling process. Hey guys, this is Aaron, and that was Eric Sargent with his Basecamp 2018 presentation, Software to Deliverable. Eric's going to spend some time in that video talking about his experience using SketchUp in the landscape architecture market and uh, just kind of showcase some of the work he's done. It's pretty cool. There's a, a lot of good examples of SketchUp being used um, and some, some really cool models, some good stuff that he shows. Uh, what I ended up kind of taking out of that was uh, some different ways to use SketchUp in landscape architecture. Um, so I'm going to look at a model t today uh, kind of in preparation for Eric's video launching later this week that uh, is maybe a tip you might be able to use if you do landscape architecture. So let's, let's hop right in. All right, so in this model, um, I have just uh, this little park, and I have some 2D trees on here. So one of the things that happens in landscape architecture, maybe more than other use cases of SketchUp, is models get heavy. I mean, it happens everywhere, but I think it's easy in landscape because if you want to put some details into something like a tree, you can pretty quickly go from, you know, a 2D drawing like this or a face me component to thousands, if not millions of faces, if you're drawing things like leaves and, and that kind of thing. So, um, so I got a quick tip basically on a, a way to, to save yourself some heartache with those kind of models. So in here, you can see I have, uh, my, my landscape is all grouped together. And then I have on top of that, I have components for my different, uh, types of trees. So I have, uh, one, two, three different types of trees. And then I have some bushes here and I made components out of each of these. Now, because the way I set it up, it's gonna be real quick and easy for me to switch between my 2D like this and my 3D face me components. And then I have another layer, which is kind of my render ready layer, which will show the render trees. And these are all high poly, lots of surfaces, uh, but they'll be good if I wanna go out to rendering. So just looking at how I did that, uh, each one of these components actually contains a bunch of different uh, things to be drawn. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and look at one. We're going to bur burrow into one component. So right here, I have this one. This is called tree one. So I'm going to double click that. So right now, all I have is this component turned on. You can see when I select it up here in my entity info, that's going to show up in the 2D trees layer. So as I toggle 2D trees on and off, that comes and goes. Whoops. Separate from that, on the 3D trees layer, I stuck my face me component. So I see here 3D trees. So as I have that turned on, it's gonna give me my face me tree. So this is maybe where I would do, you know, look around the model, see are the trees filling up the space? Is it too much, is it too little? That sort of thing. I could do that with my face me. And then separate from that, I have a render trees layer. So if I turn that on, this is where I get my more, my high poly, um, you can see it's, it's already causing SketchUp to lag a little bit. I'm actually uh, not on the most powerful computer in the world right now, and this is actually slowing it down a little bit. But it's a high poly. It's This is what maybe I would want to send out if I was actually doing some rendering, something like that. Or maybe I want to do a, a nice shadow study where it's going to put realistic shadows on the ground, something like that. The nice thing about doing it this way, there's a couple advantages to this, this approach. One is that by having everything on separate layers, I can real quickly toggle between the amount of detail I need. So if I'm just gonna kind of do a fly through, something like that, uh, my, my face me trees might be enough. I'm just gonna kind of look through here. What does this section look like with the trees? How's that gonna look? I know I'm not getting the most accurate. This is not exactly the way the trees are gonna end up looking, but I can get a feel for how those types of trees in those locations are gonna go. Um, I have my 2D trees, of course, so if I wanted to print out a, uh, just a layout, of, I want to send something to, to layout to make a document, something like that, I could go with that. And then, of course, finally, I have this render trees, which is something that maybe, like I said, 
I could do my actual rendering or shadow study, something like that, but not something I'd want to work in all the time. This allows me to quickly toggle to whatever's going to be best, what's going to be quickest, keep SketchUp snappy with my 2D trees and only show my 3D trees when I need them. The nice thing about doing it the way I did where all of these pieces are in one spot is if I want to take one of these and I want to maybe say I want to copy it, I can just stick it over here. And in copying that one component then, I've actually made a new instance of each of those different tree types. So I don't have to go drag in three different components in there. They're all in one piece and I just toggle them using my layers. So there you go. Quick tip for landscape architecture. If you're going to use multiple tree types, different levels of detail, nestle them all together. Stick them in one component and just use your layers to toggle between them. Hope that's something helpful. Hope you enjoy Eric's video later this week. Let us know what you thought. If you like this tip or if you have your own landscape architecture tips, leave them down below. Let us know how we did. Maybe subscribe or like. I like making these videos, but we like making them a lot more when there's something you want to see. Thank you.